What's up guys, this is Keith Kelfis, and I've got 11 things that you can do from home if you have a service business, and I know that you wanna be out there working right now, I wanna be out there. This is getting uh, frustrating, but I understand why, and I respect it. So I, I, I took out a notepad and a pen, and I wrote down 11 things that you can do, even if you're, uh, you have a business where you need to be out in the field working, there's a lot of things that we can do from home to really uh, move forward. So this is Keith Kelfus with the Landscaping Employee Trap, and I, I talk about, uh, in this channel, if you're new, I, how I started a small business from the ground up, like I documented my whole thing over the past 2000 videos and we just hit like 20 million views online. I really, really appreciate it. But, but, but nonetheless, all right, here's 11 things, 11 things that you can do at home right now. May, you know, before I even say it, I just want to say like this lockdown thing sucks and I mean, my, my phone's ringing right now. My voicemail box is filling up customers that I have to get back to and let them know that we'll be there as soon as we can. And uh, all right, let's 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 move forward with this. All right, things to do while in lockdown. Ready? Okay, one, build your website. Work on your website and make your website awesome. Make it amazing. Um, you can, if you don't have a website, you can go on Google My Business, Google My Business, download the app, and on your computer they have a free website builder that's freaking awesome. And well, it's not that awesome, but it's free and it looks decent. If not, you can go to WordPress.com, WordPress.org, Wix, Squarespace. Um, I use a website builder called Kajabi. And it's kind of expensive, but it's phenomenal. Um, that's what I use. And what else? Oh, yeah, yeah. GoDaddy. GoDaddy. You can buy your domain name there and build a pretty dope website. My wife's using GoDaddy, Gaddy, and she's built a ton of websites, and they look amazing. So I'm, GoDaddy has come a long way now. So that's awesome. And uh, if you don't know how to build a website, like you can learn, brew a couple uh, pots of coffee and stay up for a couple nights and do it. But these new website builders, I mean, you can you can crank out a dope website in like five, six hours. So uh, this Russell Brunson guy from ClickFunnels that I follow, he talks about ethically stealing or ethically ripping off your competitors' websites. What he means by that is go to the best lawn care and landscaping or small business websites that, that you see out there by these huge companies that have paid like coders, you know, 50 grand, and you can find the best of the best and kind of model what they're doing, right? So make your website phenomenal and integrate everything. Uh, so number two, number two, let's go number two. What's number two is... Revise your work orders and contracts. This is important. Like if you're laying around watching YouTube like all day and just scrolling through Instagram and depressed, I mean, I totally get that. I've been shutting my phone off and I'll talk about this later, but it's very productive to sometimes just shut your phone off and stop looking at the news. But anyways, re revise your work orders and contracts. Does anything need to be added to the contracts? Has anything happened in the last year that you're like, ooh, I should really add that to the contract, right? Or notify my customers of that in writing. Uh, get it all in a digital format and automate it so it, you can get a digital signature upon request. So basically, whenever you send a customer a proposal to do work, you want that, you want a copy of your insurance, work order, the proposal, contract, anything just goes to the customer in a digital packet and then they can see it right then and there and they can also sign off digitally and it just happens on autopilot now. Your CRM should be able to do this for you if you don't have one. You can use all of Google's free stuff, Google Suite, uh, Google Calendar, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google everything. Um, or you can use a CRM. There's a ton of them out there. I'm not going to name them off now, but it's a customer relationship management software program that goes on your, your computer and on your phone and you run your whole business off of it. You should be able to upload all those forms into it, into the work order and attach it. So it just automatically sends to every single customer. So update all that stuff and now make it as professional as possible so you can you know, get signatures, work on that, you know, it's, you can work on that stuff. Okay. Um, pardon me. I got, I'm fiddling right here cause I've got this new studio set up 
I've, this has been a dream of mine for years to put something like this together, and I'm just kind of getting used to it. Um, three. Three here. Create and write pre-made seasonal email blasts for your clients and do it off of behavior-based. Behavior-based marketing, what's that? All right. So I use MailChimp, GetResponse, and Kajabi. These are all different email marketing software platforms. There's a bunch of them, but you can use MailChimp because it's free. Right? You can send like 5,000 emails a month. So basically, you're going to sit down and type up an email for your existing clients for you know spring, summer, fall. You can actually look up online or on Pinterest like re reasons to seasons and reasons to email customers. Like there's Martin Luther King Day and presidents. There's all these different Easter. There's all these different reasons that you can use as an excuse. Many of them more than we're aware of, but you can use them as an excuse to email all your clients to get their attention and keep you top of their mind, right? Write a few emails and get them queued up inside of either Storm and Google Docs or get them queued up inside of MailChimp and ready to go. Now write a second set of emails, which are for potential prospects, potential clients. And the reason I'm saying that is because um, there's a there's an amazing book called Great Leads or Six Great Leads. It's by Michael Masterson. Look it up on Kindle. You can read it in a night. It's a phenomenal book on marketing. And what it talks about is there's like cold, warm, and hot. And you need different messaging for different clients wherever they are in the buying cycle. If they don't know about you, you're not going to send them a message that's like, hey, we've done some work before in the past and see if you want to get on the calendar again on, on our schedule. Let's let's rock. You don't talk to them like that. You would talk to them in a different way, which would be like, hey, I'm just reaching out, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Type those up. Get them all queued up. Why? Why would you do that now? Because in the middle of the season when you're busy as hell, to sit down in front of a, a computer for a couple hours or a laptop, I mean, for a lot of guys, me, I mean, it's a totally different gear. I'm out in the field running all over the place doing quotes and working. And to try to sit down and force yourself to sit in front of a computer and type, I mean, I'll pull my hair out. So now is a good time to get all that stuff preloaded and ready. So when the summer hits and you're slammed, all you're going to do is sit down and MailChimp, pull it up send it off to a thousand customers or a thousand clients it's already made um, if you need help with that look up i don't know pre-scripted or pre-written email copy does that make sense all right cool so next thing is four read articles and watch videos online uh, to learn more about your numbers learn basic accounting um, um i'm sorry uh, b basic bookkeeping skills. If you have a QuickBooks account, maybe you do it all in a spreadsheet. I don't know. I got QuickBooks. Learn basic bookkeeping skills and reconcile all your books. Go through all last year's books and reconcile it all. Get it all organized and then do it from here on out. Uh, that sounds easy to do. It's not easy. It's very time consuming. Um, that's why you would hire a bookkeeper if you're able to do so. You can find a bookkeeper on Upwork.com, but do your research and due diligence. You can find it maybe a, I don't know, I'm going down the rabbit hole, but uh, work on your books. Oh, yeah, learn how to create and read P&L statements and learn more about your numbers. When I mean that, when I say that, is if you have a CRM, like I use a CRM called Jobber. There's, there's a ton of them out there, but you can go and you can print up spreadsheets of all your past numbers and you can find out uh, what percentage of your work came from where. Like, oh, landscape installs was your biggest ticket price thing you did but your highest profit margin was in something else or why uh, why are you driving all the way to this zip code because you have the lowest amount of money coming from that zip code it, the 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 numbers allow you to see things and if you have the time and take the time to dig into the numbers it'll help you a lot make more strategic decisions right i started doing this over the last couple of years and bleh, i was pissed off okay so oh number five Number five, read books and watch videos on landscaping stuff, proper planting techniques, how-to videos, how to install patios properly if that's what you do if you do hardscaping, um, 
videos that increase your education on the green industry or whatever you do for a living, like work and on and hone your skills and develop your vocabulary. So when you're talking to customers, you can position, position yourself as more of an expert, more of an authority. Number six, I need some water. I've been drinking a lot of water lately. Okay, uh, clean out and organize your trucks, tools, build shelves, racks, all that stuff. Like, is there something in your trailer or I- anywhere that every time you go to grab these tools, it's a total mess or you're, like, frustrated because you can't find that thing or you send a guy to go grab the thing and he can't find it? Like, put yourself in that state of mind. What happens when you're slammed busy? You go, oh, my God, I need to fix that thing. Shut off your phone and go out in your landscape trailer, for example, and go build those shelves with those little compartments that you always wanted to build. And like, this is where the two cycle oil goes. This is where the wrenches go. This is where the edger blades go. And like, build it out. I don't know. Like, that type of stuff, you can get in the zone and do it. And you can, you know, it'll really help in the long run. Hey, it's stuff you've always wanted to do, but never had time to do, right? Um, number seven. Sit down and call. It's important. Excuse me. Sit down and call, text, or email or email blast all of your existing clients in priority from your favorite first. And literally just sit on the phone and start calling them. Spend an entire day calling all your clients, texting them, emailing them. Say, hey, what's up? Um, I care about you. How are you doing? I care about you. I mean, that's right. That right there is huge. Um, contacting your clients. I know I have a couple clients that I need to contact right now. And I, I'm just gonna do it. The one client I thought of specifically, I'm a little afraid to contact. Uh, not for me, but just because the stress of the conversation. But I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it first thing tomorrow morning. I'm gonna call that customer. Bet. All right, number eight. Oh, get a new CRM in your business and start uploading all your contacts and syncing your data. A customer relationship management software program. If you, by chance, don't have the money for one or you don't want to spend the money right now, just use all the Google's free products. Like, go into your contacts, upload all your contacts into Google. Google Contacts is an app. And then you can actually, like, organize them by list, by clients, by, by all types of different stuff. And you can build out a database, but I would recommend getting some type of CRM, uh, customer relationship management software program, where you can build all that out. And it allows you to invoice your clients digitally. Very important. Collect money digitally, accept credit cards through the app or online digitally. Very important, right? Uh, Since we probably won't be doing a lot of shaking of hands now or passing back and forth of checks as much. Uh, for a while, so that'd be really important, right? Oh, excuse me. <sighs> Next thing is put out a help wanted ad and start number nine. Put out a help wanted ad and start holding interviews over the phone. Um, if you're gonna get really, really, really swamped, do you need help? Do you need help? Should you be thinking about that right now? All right, number 10, call. Oh, this is interesting. This is a left, this is a curveball. <clears throat> call your phone company and insurance providers and all of your fixed costs and see if you're eligible for a discount or a lower payment. I learned this from Kevin Trudeau in his book, uh, Debt Cures They Don't Want You to Know About. It was an awesome book. Uh, I've listened to like hundreds of books out while working, and this is one of them. So he says do it like once every quarter. I do it like once a year in the winter or whenever I happen to be on the phone with Comcast or T-Mobile or this or that. I'm always asking, and, do, and they, they say to you, okay, before we go, um, is there anything else I can help you with, Mr. Kelfus? I say, yeah, yes. <laughs> Am I eligible for a discount? Hey, I've been with you for five, six, seven, eight years. Is there a different tier you can put me in? 
uh, I've been with this insurance company forever. I was doing some research at some laws of pass. If I ha- if you haven't gotten any points on your driving record or X Y Z or home insurance, I'm eligible for a lower rate. Hey, what's going on with this? They're not going to come out and tell you. They're not going to hunt you down and call you. Hey, Mr. Kelfus, you're eligible for a lower rate. No, you got to call. You got to ask these people. So literally, go through. Go through your credit card companies and, and ask them. Hey, can I get a lower interest rate? Go through everything and uh, and I w- I've been able to literally <clears throat> move my entire cell phone plan uh, for me and my wife. We have phones, personal phone, business phone, and tablets. But what, what was I thinking? I wasn't even thinking. A few years ago, I moved it all to a business plan and put it in a bundle and was able to get, like, it's a lot cheaper now. So now we have all these, the latest phones and everything, and it's a lot cheaper than it would have been. And then I'm always asking him for a discount. And then we've been able to get discounts. I realize uh, there was one thing really stupid. Oh, my God. I don't even want to tell you. It's embarrassing. I was so busy, so, so busy. But this is how they get you. I was paying for a tablet. An old tablet that my wife didn't even use anymore. I think like, oh, I sold it to a friend of mine uh, for like 40 bucks. It had been running at something like 50 bucks a month for the past year and a half. It racked up like 1500 bucks. I was just paying every month. I didn't know. And I was on the phone actually asking them. I was like, hey, am I eligible for any discounts? They said, yeah, we see you have this device here. And like, but, but I didn't know because I didn't know what to ask. It was right in front of my face. I was asking for a lower discount. I was paying for a tablet. I didn't even know. I was, I was like, oh, my God, I've been paying for this tablet. I didn't even know. And um, they gave me like $150 credit. <laughs> Whatever, dude. But it feels nice to not paying that, not be paying that anymore. Stupid. Um, yeah, so that's right there. Oh, yeah, number 11. I went off on a tangent there. But it's important. Do that. You might, you, you might be able to save a couple hundred bucks a month. It, oh, shut off your phone for a few hours each day. And meditate. Get yourself into a peaceful state. Oh, peaceful state. So... Uh, if you read books on productivity and stuff, like some of the most successful CEOs supposedly don't take any personal phone calls before 11 a.m. or before noon. If you've got a service business, that's different. You've got to pick up the phone. If you have a calling center, you know, an answering service that can pick up the phone, that's cool. But um, so here's what, here's what I'm doing. This is helping me on Sundays. Literally, I shut my phones off. Now, I do look at my phones once to twice on Sundays real quick, and I shut them back off. But all day Sunday, the phones are off. I got a cheap little private flip phone. I call it my private line. Like, my wife has the number. That's it. And it doesn't have any internet or anything. And it's just in case if I leave or run errands, she needs to get a hold of me. It's so amazing to keep my phone off on Sundays because it allows all of the static and the tension from the week of all the crap on the internet and social media and the constant contact with people. Like you you forget about your identity, that sense of presence of who you are, that sense of calmness, (sighs) like that, you know? And it's really unhealthy, right? So if you have a day a week or at least a half a day each week, like I, I know people, oh shoot, wrong camera angle, sorry. I was sitting here on the side this whole time. Okay, I'm getting used to this thing. I know people who um who have literally told me I never shut off my phone. My phone's on. My phone's on 24 seven. What if there's an emergency? What if somebody needs to call at this time? My, I haven't shut off my phone in 20 years. Like, how dare you shut off your phone? And they'll try to guilt trip you. Hey, that might be you. That might you might have a family member or somebody who like you or a type of thing that you do. You can't shut off your phone. But I'm just asking, like, if you can find even a half a day a week, just, like, from the moment you wake up, you don't even look at your phone until, like, I don't know, just noon. Try that. You'll you'll be amazed at how, how, how cool it is. I actually got this thing. It's like a, uh, it was on Shark Tank. It's like a lockbox. It's like, I would run and get it real quick, but I'm not going to. 
It has a lock on top and a timer. It's like a, a, a plastic safe. And you could put anything you want in it. Like, I don't know, you could put cigarettes in there if you're trying to quit smoking. And you time it anywhere from 1 to 24 hours. And when it goes, bzz, you can't get in there unless you, like, saw it open with a saw. You can't get in there until the timer goes off and it lets you back in. So I was putting my phones in there on Sundays. <laughs> And I couldn't get in there until 10 p.m. Sunday night, and that's what I had to do. And it was awesome. But now it's just a habit, right? So, And the only reason I'm kind of going on and on about that is if you're on social media too much and you're on your phone too much, you're going to get sucked in. And there's nothing to me, one of the crappy things, I'm not going to say there's nothing worse, but one of the crappy things about technology is how quickly it can suck you in. I mean, literally my wife earlier, she was trying to do something and she went to check her phone and I saw her staring at her phone for like eight minutes. And she goes, oh my God, Facebook just sucked me in again. And she was angry, right? I'm not, I'm like, I know, it doesn't that piss you off? Like it literally, it like, it's hypnotic. It's, I mean, I've literally sat on the toilet <laughs> and looked at Instagram and there's this amazing stuff on it. Oh my God. How do they do the, what, is, oh, what, how did they, what, what, there's a guy jumping off a cliff and he's doing 10 black, black. Oh, he landed that part. Oh my God. How does that, oh my God, look at that tractor. How is that? Like, and you're sitting there, you, I mean, you waste 15 minutes and your legs are all numb. <laughs> like I'm, but I'm angry now. I'm sick of that shit. Like it's not doing anything to improve your life. So I'm just saying, uh, so through the list again, build your website, um, revise your work orders and contracts, go through the stuff in your business, create and write pre-made seasonal emails, write articles, uh, watch articles and watch videos online, learn about accounting, bookkeeping, things like that. Uh, read books and videos on proper things to do in your business, best best practices for your industry, right? Is there any online certifications you can do? How can you make the highest use of your time, right, and stay focused, Um uh, clean out and organize your trucks and trailers, organize your tools, build racks and shelves, organize your paperwork and file folder cabinets and organizers, sit down, call, text, and email all of your clients and try to get new clients. Uh, get a CRM integrated into your business right away and start uploading all your contact, reconcile your QuickBooks, uh, do bookkeeping, put out a help wanted ad if you need to hire anybody and um, call all of your cell phone and insurance providers and all that. See if you're eligible for a discount and shut off your phone get some meditation and quiet time each day organize your environment my friend that's some tips for some self-reflection all right i'm getting back on the hustle myself right now but i love making these videos i'm always going to make these videos um i would make these videos for free i was running around making videos when i was a kid i was borrowing people's cameras to make videos back when i was like 18 years old now i'm 36 I love making videos. I think YouTube is awesome. And I think you're awesome, my friend. All right, I hope that this whole thing turns around quick so we can have an awesome live event, especially events like the GIE Expo, so we can all shake hands and hang out and have a beer. Because I'll tell you one thing, dude, Kelfus don't drink. But if we all hang out, I'm having a couple beers, bro. I ain't even playing. Yeah. <laughs>